Thank you very much, Professor Sharma, and of course, uh, I am Rotak for giving me this opportunity to interact. Vulnerability in veracity. Very interesting topic in the context of today's world. Let me go into the meaning of veracity. All of us know it, but still I think the core ingredient of veracity is truth, exactness and ethics. What does vulnerability mean? That it has become susceptible to environmental challenges. I was thinking that all of us must have lied some point of my, our time. In fact, all of us technically are liars. Can you tell your friend that you are looking ugly? Can you say, Mama, your food is bad? Because that's called that, of course. So I think from primordial age, distortion of facts has been a part of life. In fact, in 1906, Winston Churchill, the then British politician, Prime Minister, used a term called terminological inexactitude. The British, British way of talking that you can't be so direct, which is actually another euphemism for lies. So what has happened now that suddenly this topic has come up? What is truth? What is lie? Is lie a fact that is devoid of truth? Or lie is something different completely? Is there something called absolute truth? So what is truth? Actually, there's some problem with truths now. There are actually there are too many truths. Everyone has a point of view. Today it is getting accentuated by empowerment of individuals because of social media. But fundamentally, there is no, no more one truth. It's no longer two-dimensional. It is multi-dimensional. There was a time when information used to make us enlightened. Now information makes us anxious. I call it enlightened anxiety. In fact, after 26-11, a lot of psychiatrists had to help. Sorry, uh, before 9-11, after 9-11. People are not getting sleep because psychiatrists are required because you cannot handle the trauma. So the more information you get, you lose your sleep. So truth becomes dependent on convenient outcome, depending on it is whose agenda. So you do it in such a manner, it looks like fact, but no one is checking facts. Which means ultimately it's about narratives, multiple narratives, which are all apparently are very convenient. There is a concept called homophilia sorting. We love to have cluster in a group of homogeneous minds. So if your friend has shared something with you, you know it's true. Because how many times is it shared, that's the definition of truth. It's not about fact. So everyone has multiple narratives, same thing you are talking about, but in a different way. If you have heard about Daniel Kahneman, the Nobel Prize winner, he talked about cognitive ease. We feel comfortable with our friends, with our circles, with our communities. If they have said it's true. When you look at where is truth vulnerable, then actually I clustered them under three categories could not find a fourth one. Everything comes under this. What is consumerism? Our marketing and advertising world. All of you might be knowing it, but I thought, I give you a glimpse. There are thousands of such cases. In fact, there are, there are uh, boom TVs there. They talk about busting this uh, fake news in advertising and marketing. Johnson's baby powder causes cancer because they use asbestos. Cases are still on. 
their market brand equity is falling and they are fighting this and it's like a marginalistic company they can't talk much in public but their market share brand equity is coming down all of you must be knowing about what has happened to nike after they appointed a brand ambassador who is talking about championing black which some whites they started burning nike put up videos about how to burn in nike shoes so those who are not bothered they said you have to own a nike shoe how do you burn it is your problem kurkure there is a, a video in youtube that kurkure wafers you put a uh, match match under it match box and you put your fire under it it melts ashirbad data there is a plastic inside they fought for one year to counter that so today this consumerism fake news creates a different level of anxiety and most importantly you don't know who is your enemy it also has a belief system you know it all around the world the belief system the recent one is bolsonaro of brazil he talked about the romance of military rule when when and brazil was more than two decades of uh, uh, military rule and he has come back to power so you are going back from democracy to a military regime you opted for it is again the belief system is that is brexit and of course there is another one that is going on now vaccines are bad for kids the huge one in the in, in the in the social media so people are going retrograde that vaccines actually save kids but you are thinking that there is suddenly this feeling and when that happens you start wondering what is truth and of course life you will see it in every day paper they talk about trending today you eat egg yellow no problem tomorrow you 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 eat, eat chocolate there is problem someone said black chocolate so everyone is quoting various research sources no one knows what is truth you have just give a source now it is good you look at instagram photo there is something your real position is that but you put that photo what happens you are putting in your social media your best face forward everyone is happy no one is unhappy what happens to you in terms of psychological pressure so that's it now what happens because of this kind of distortion this kind of factual inexactitude or whatever you call it this huge social pressure that if i don't get likes i get depressed no mobile syndrome fear of missing out there are different demands you must have heard about blue whale when people harm themselves they commit suicide ultimately and record it also so there are various kinds of pressures blurring of boundaries between belief and disbelief like in bombay it happened that lord ganesha has been drinking milk it is continuously happening same thing with sabri mala sabri with so many other places churches and everything interestingly narratives are also getting polarized in fact i feel polarization is the new new neutrality because there nothing called absolute neutrality right left center wherever it is you have to take a polarized stand it creates a different kind of nerve reaction so what happens is now reaction that happen mass hysteria so baby lynching happens because someone has put up uh, put up something sorry man lynching happens when someone put up a video which is not from india about child lifters cow slaughter is anticipation of this so there is a mob hysteria riots do take place so what are the side effects of vulnerability to truth you be get myopic it leads to polarization i take either this position or that position you suffer from depression there is fear do i communicate this or i don't communicate i get trolled it creates anguish angst and then of course it takes an outburst is the world so dystopian need not be i quote here the american poet maya angelou i love her a letter to the daughter you may not control all the events that happen to you but you need not get reduced by it 
If that be the case, is it all around dystopia or there are some hopes? It is important that you have to evaluate for objectivity. You cannot be into that, that it is my community, so I am comfortable, so it must be true. If I have got this message from a friend, it's got to be true. Today, because the whole currency has changed. If something is shared too many times, if something is trending, so that's the story. The old style of fact checking is very important. What is the source? From where the source is coming? And then, of course, there is a huge pressure. Newspapers, channels want to break stories. You, as an individual, you are bragging right. I know this story first, so I must share. Immediately, the moment you get, you share. So, these three things, if you control the temptation, I think it's good. Now, in one of the vulnerabilities or fighting the vulnerability of, of, or to veracity is that I think all of us are part of the problem. We are, we are only doing it, all of us individually. If we are all part of the problem, only one good news is there. We can be the part of solution. What is the solution which I mentioned in terms of look for objectivity, validation and authenticity over bragging that don't fall into that temptation. Then that is, we can be the solution. But from when do you should you start? Start now, start today. Once we believe that it is our responsibility to the world, it is our responsibility to our future generation, to our children, then we become responsible rather than falling into the victim of a typical, you know, cognitive ease or, or for that matter, the comfort of our own community. It is about the responsibility to the world. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Can you turn so, on the light? Yeah. Can we have the lights turned on, please? I'm recording also. <laughs> so, uh, I would like to ask the audience any questions, sir, would be happy to answer, I'm sure. All of us are victims of this, not necessarily you have to talk on this subject, any subject that you want. I'll better come down, please let me know. Starting from spiritualism to skin, I can handle it. Casualty. So, as if 
There is a pre-truth and post-truth. There is truth is always truth. As I told you that 196, uh, 1996, Churchill used the word terminological exactitude. Just to euphemize lies. So, if euphemistically you talk, you can call it terminological inexactitude, but point is today, society, people, everything. I think the whole thing got acceleration because of the all pervasiveness of social media anytime, anywhere. An individual has become empowered. So unknowingly we contribute to it. We, how many times you, you share, how many times you have read this guy has died, that guy died, and the prostate is not there. Because the matrix has changed. Old matrix was on fact. The editor would say, where is the fact? But today, sir, this is trending. It must be true. That's the problem. So there is nothing called step by the truth is truth. That's it. <coughs> but so long you become objective, remain objective, it's better. But it should start from you. Thank you so much, Tanya. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, my name is Neha. So, since uh, you spoke about uh, spiritualism, so uh, uh, this is a word which is used a lot nowadays. But uh, from my experience of interacting with a lot of people, what I understood is people related to either religion or either with code of conduct. So, I don't really understand how do we relate it with the personality. So, what are your views? Can you, can you just clarify this question with this, with this stat long statement? What is the question? Sir, I wanted to know what uh, do you understand by spirit, uh, spiritualism? Spiritualism. Okay. That is the core tenet. There is a difference between spiritualism and religion. Huh? First of all, that you get clear. Spiritualism has nothing to do with religion. Religion is more about rituals. Spiritualism is about humanism. So you, you don't, you you don't see any difference between me and you, on certain social illusions, positions, age, income, uh, whether you're staying in, uh, you are rich, poor, and all that. Spiritualism is about human values. Spiritualism is about equality. Spiritualism is about personal ethics of, of uh, truthfulness. Religion leads to bigotry sometimes. Religion leads to rigidity to the point of you know what is going on all around the country. That's religion. Real spiritual person, in fact, all of us are spiritual. You may or may not understand because we are too young for it. Because everyone thinks we are a human being passing through a temporary spiritual experience, but actually we are a spiritual being passing through a temporary human experience. So fundamentally, when you start from there, everyone is equal. It is not divided by gender or designation or experience or salary or whatever it is. Spiritualism talks about inequality and most importantly being you treat people the way you like to be treated. You treat people equally. So that's very important. So it's nothing to do with religion. 